but we always have it. Yep. There we go. As we, I was, we were just talking about hair antennas and, you know, like and my third eye antennas. Uh, I, I've always loved growing my hair out. I just never did back in the past because I was, wor was working and doing, you know, sales jobs and stuff that, uh, you know, it was beneficial to have a nice haircut and be uh, all clean and shaven and, you know, at least having, I, I would grow it out. I would grow a beard, but I, it'd be, you know, trimmed up and, and yeah. it looked look nice for, you know, so that customers would. Now, what I really liked was when I was doing sales for Pepsi mm -hmm. and uh, like I was doing uh, in the mountains. Wow. So yeah. I was able to, uh, you know, they, up in the mountains, you've got different clientele. You've got mountain men clientele who uh, who want you to have a beard. <laughs> oh, I see. They, they vibe with the beards over there in the mountains. See, yeah. see, that's, that's the interesting thing about sales is, you know, especially something like modern, you know, you know, grocery store sales is like you've got different clientele and you've got to kind of like cater to each different clientele. Yeah. You know? And so yeah. I've just been, well, the last few years over my awakening, uh, you know, my Shivambu awakening, especially specifically, mm -hmm. it's been, uh, you know, I'll, I'll grow out my hair a bit and then kind of like I was finding it was nice in the winter to just chop it all off, go monk mode style and kind of well so the hair it connects you outwards yeah. you know it connects you to the energies around you and then the monks they 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 shave everything off for de detachment so that they can go inward a bit better yeah. um yeah and that's that's a whole other story i'm sure you're well aware of all that but this we're talking about today shivambu awakening yes we was talking about hair and, uh, and i agree with you on the hair thing it's amazing i'm growing mine now since i've been with my parents but the shivambu awakening brothers what literally woke me up to everything that i i feel like since i first got into urine it was my in into my life purpose and what i'm well, I don't know fully, but it woke me up. It woke my brain up, removed my depression, just fresh urine. And it literally put me into you guys and everything, spirituality, God consciousness. It was all from urine. I love that. Oh, I love it about it. Super, super powerful. You know, the way the way mine began is uh, basically I had I had uh, just in the last the final six months or so of uh, when my mom but just before my mom died um i had you know it was it was intense like it was she was she basically died from a failed spiritual awakening uh we all just thought she was losing her mental health and it was like no she actually was waking up and just had no one to guide her yeah all of us just thought it was all mental and you know she'd get end up getting in trouble with the police and and you know uh, getting thrown into mental hospitals, thrown on drugs and all that stuff. And uh, that was rough. And so, you know, that last six months, I had started working an office job. It was actually, it wasn't a job. It was not a business opportunity. And, you know, they, they taught me all about God and, and uh, you know, they were Christians. They're Christians at this company that I was with, uh, the uh, office, at least specifically that I was in. And, you know, they taught me the Bible and, you know, we, we do Bible study, which was pretty cool. You know, you don't get yeah. that in corporate America. You don't get no. studying, talking about this stuff. And they taught me about the law of attraction. They taught me about wow all kinds of different things, entrepreneurship. And it like I was already a, a, a entrepreneur spirited person. Hmm. Um, it just woke me up to reality in such a deep level. Hmm. And in that process, I was working in an office. So, and I had never been in an office setting, you know, and I, I was so focused on work hmm. that I, I let my, my physical health deteriorate, uh, as my mental health was deteriorating from all the stuff going on in my life. And yeah. I fell into a pretty deep depression, but hmm. I didn't recognize the depression. I didn't recognize it because I was in such a positive environment that it acted like a, a antidepressant of sorts, you know, where I would be there even throughout the day when I was alone, like I was so excited. I didn't even realize that there was this deep seated depression from everything that happened with my mom and losing my mom. Yeah. And I packed on, I, I had gone from, you know, basically 
prior to joining this company, I was very focused on going back towards the vegan diet mm. and, and get, cutting out all animal products and just eating super healthy. And, uh, you know, I ended up when everything started happening with my mom, I ended up falling backwards in my diet into, you know, standard American diet food and way overeating fast Of course, because the emotions were going on. You could justify it through the tough times, you know, to use that mask. Yeah. And so, you know, that combination of eating that way, not working out, not fasting, not doing all my, all my pro, you know, practices that I used to do. Uh, got me from 200 pounds to 285 pounds and that's the highest weight I ever weighed. And I was, miserable. Yeah. you know, yeah. I was miserable. And then one time, one day, one day I was sitting there at home thinking, and I was like, dude, I'm depressed. You know, like I looked at myself in the mirror and I'm like, that is yeah. the face of a depressed man. I am ah. depressed. And, yeah. and literally like, you know, I, I just, I went back into the office and I was like, Hey guys, like I'm depressed. And I think I need to take a break from being here because it's, it's such a good environment for me to be in that I don't even realize that I'm depressed and I need to focus on myself and getting myself out of this hole I'm in if I'm ever going to move forward in this business opportunity. And they were like, you know, my, I had some great coaches uh, and they were like, you know, we agree with you and I'm so happy that you've seen this uh, because now you can, can really start making progress on yourself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, take all the time you need at home and we'll be here if you ever want to come back and work with us again. And wow. so I basically like, you know, I, I sat in bed for maybe a week just on YouTube, like, all right, so what am I going to do this time to lose all this weight and, and get my health and mental health, physical health, spiritual health back on track yeah. and emotional health, you know, all that, all the, the four, the four physical emotional mental spiritual is such a, a powerful thing to focus on in my opinion and my experience yeah. um because they all interact they all intertwine you know yeah. your physical health totally is affected by your spiritual health and your emotional and mental health and and vice versa right. all would you them. also agree though that i've seen um because uh, I've been around Facebook a while and it's my opinion that there's a lot of people that are incredible with physical health, but I still feel they're lacking somewhat emotionally. They get triggered really easily and reactive and almost like they develop some kind of ego about their physical health perfection. So I, I feel oh, like there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's something else to it with this physical health. You don't well, take care of the other areas. I find spiritual health can be a powerful catalyst for that type of thing you know i i i'm very much i i think spiritual health our energetic health and everything is such a powerful thing that can you know when we awaken spiritually we start to evolve past some of that stuff and uh you know yeah. but when we're so focused on the physical you're absolutely right we can develop this really powerful strong egoic factors that really yes. just like i'm the healthiest up, ever oh, and, um, I yeah. know everything and blah yeah. yada yada yeah exactly. um, yeah and so i had actually for some time i had been into intermittent fasting and you know i was like obviously intermittent fasting is going to be a huge factor in this process and so I start looking up on YouTube videos to motivate me into to starting back up on uh, on this intermittent fasting. And, uh, you know, I ended up, I just had autoplay on. Mm. And uh, one, t one afternoon, I'm sitting there watching videos and I hear an, uh, uh, I get an autoplay and I hear this really abrupt man just yell at me hey fatty and like oh that guy i know me. snake diet yeah. guy yeah snake awesome diet. And, and you were fat uh, at the time weren't you and i'm you were, like when you were fat yeah yeah and it triggered, it yeah. triggered me man like and i was yeah. like what the heck is this like ah. why is this guy yelling at me like i wanted to cry i'm like this is so rude yeah but everything he was saying made it's, everything he was saying was like but he's so right he's and he's talking about you know longer term fasting out of the intermittent fasting into 24 48 hours and plus yes yeah. and uh you know he his his methods are, are great for a lot of people and uh i don't 
totally agree with at least for the where i'm at now his salt water fasting protocols i i yeah i couldn't do salt water fasting protocols now that i've used distilled waters and juicing and urine therapy and, and eating clean fruits and veggies now i'm very sensitive to salt and you know i i couldn't do that although you know i do think that uh for some people especially coming off of a very salty high cooked food american standard diet type of yeah. thing the, the salt can be really helpful for breaking you into longer fasting um it makes it really easy it's it's very akin to urine therapy uh because you are getting those salts in now the the issue i see with it is you're 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 adding all these rocks that your body's going to eventually want to be removed yeah you know yeah so while you can make major, major health jump, you know, I think it's very important if someone were to do something like snake diet to just have the understanding that, you know, these are these are things you're putting in your body that can lead to other issues potentially, such as, you know, those those rocks getting thrown about in your body and leaving and sediment deposits a, and everything. Yeah, getting stuck in the body. Yeah. Exactly. That's why that's where that's where, you know, distilled water comes in. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I start doing this fasting and eventually he, he started talking about urine therapy. And he was like, you know, urine, your urine is super snake juice. And I was like, huh, that makes so much sense. And the yeah. way he was talking about it, and I, I didn't really look too much into it because I, I this guy, snake diet, Cole Robinson, he, he does so much in, in self-experimentation that I'm like, if Cole's recommending it, then obviously it's doing something good for him yeah. enough and, and, and the people he's talking to enough to recommend it on his channel and to his, his, the people he's helping. Yeah. And so, you know, I had, uh, I had started saving up some urine and, uh, and didn't really get too much into it at this point. Like I, I tried it a little bit, but it wasn't, I, I was like, more focused on other things and and doing his his other protocols that I never really got too deep into the urine therapy. I started working again. I got a physical sales job that ended up leading into me doing uh, door to door sales and being out most of the afternoon outside talking to people, walking around in the sun. Um, and then uh, as the year progressed. Um, you know, I ended up closer to September, which was when my mom's birthday and death day happens. Uh, I, I started falling down into that depressed mode again and needing to grieve and take care of myself. So again, I went ahead and quit my job. I quit working and I was like, all right, it's time to really focus on me again. And he had, he taught, teaches a lot about dry fasting and, you know, for, mm close to a year i had been doing a lot of snake juice fasting the longest fast i had done was a five-day fast wow yeah and uh i had done you know some dry fasting 24 48 hour dry fast um and i was I, my goal at this point was to become a snake diet fasting coach and one of his requirements for that is that you've done a seven-day dry fast so i was like you know what yeah. i'm gonna do a seven-day dry fast Wow. Yeah. So like almost, almost instantly after quitting working, I was like, all right, let's jump into a dry fast. Let's see. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> I prepped for the dry fast and I did six days and six hours. Whoa. I, I really wanted yeah. to go for that seven days. Hmm. That six, sixth day, I was so energetic that I couldn't sleep at night. And I was like, well, I'm dry fasting. I kind of want to sleep, you know? <laughs> and I yeah. thought, I was like, I, I was like, maybe smoking a little bit of weed will help me sleep. And so I took a hit of my cousin's weed, my, her cannabis, and uh, and I got the worst munchies, dude. I was I couldn't stop thinking about the coconut water and the fruit. Well, of course, because weed makes you hungry. Out. Yeah, a terrible time, yeah, I guess, yeah, to the drive of the weed. Definitely stimulate those munchies and yeah. and the imagination too and i just i couldn't get my i i went down and laid down to try and sleep and like i sat there so stimulated from the dry fasting the weed and my thoughts were just all up on, on this coconut water and i'm like that i just went i got up i'm like screw it i'm breaking it i'll do seven <laughs> yeah. days another time <laughs> yeah and uh you know I, I broke it and then uh within that first week after the dry fast 
within days, I was like, you know what? It's time to really dig deep on urine therapy. You know, that's a very, it, it was something that really intrigued me. And I started looking up YouTube videos and just walk, listening all day, every day, listening to people talk about urine therapy. I found Andrew Norton Weber, talk, uh, you know, talking about distilled waters and juices and fasting and fruit eating mm. and, uh, and, you know, and, and urine therapy. And I just, I just started going deep into it, you know, looping almost all day, every day I'd wake up, drink my pee. I would literally, I would drink all the way till I went to sleep. And uh, like after two or three hours, I'd have to wake up because I had to pee so bad. And yeah. I'd just drink it again and uh, yeah. go back to sleep and then wake up and drink it again. And literally I was just looping. And when I first started that first few, few drinks that I had, I was like, dude, it like shifted my mind. Like I felt it like in my yeah. mind, I felt awake and aware and like not depressed anymore me too yeah and uh yeah like uh because for me i was process, for me i was depressed i didn't realize i was depressed until i drank urine and then apparently i wasn't depressed but i was aware of depression through it like you said earlier when right. you said you weren't aware that you're depressed and i really wasn't aware i thought i'd done my work emotionally but physically obviously maybe i was stagnant so the urine the fresh yeah. urine really changed things well these these emotions can get stuck in our bodies and the musculature and the fascia, you know, and our organs too. Mm. And, um, I, I definitely, you know, we, we all talk about the urine therapy. It's got the, uh, the physical components, like say you have an allergic reaction to something and, and those physical components to teach your body how to be immune to that allergic reaction are coming through the urine. Well, I, I think, and, and in my experience, my, my understanding is that there's also little homeopathic micro doses of those emotions of the, the imbalances. So, um, I, I watched your talk with, uh, with, oh, geez, what's his name? I know it was Nicholas Scazzano and, uh, oh, yeah, Crystal and Nicholas Oh, oh, yeah, the Ace Sheeran one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that interview on their show yeah. and like one of the callers one of the callers was talking about how you know it literally your urine has all the information for all imbalances within you yeah you know and, and you start start drinking it and those imbalances start to fix yeah and you know it's very um a urine therapy and fasting and fruit is such a powerful combination but the urine especially hmm. will just boil those emotions up out of you yeah yeah those trapped emotions and so you start feeling so much and 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 really being able to process all those emotions and uh you know elliot pulse i don't know if you know of elliot i've pulse, heard of that guy yeah i used to know him yeah i remember him yeah i followed him for quite a few years and he really aided me in my awakening mm. um to who i am and what i am and what i'm supposed to do, do here and he talks about how well so depression is is the opposite of expression so when we do not express ourselves and instead suppress those emotions mm -hmm. those emotions get suppressed and leads to depression huh interesting and so i i'm a very firm believer firm knower from experiencer that we need to express these things and in, instead of yeah i think you're right and it, and maybe i was depressed too because i hadn't learned or um had people listen to me and um in terms of my wisdom as because everyone's got wisdom when they come up and then i found um people on facebook that were listening as well as i was learning i was sharing uh, and that's why i've always enjoyed naturally even though i'm introverted to do facebook lives i do youtubes i'll do this interview with you i'll share my story i'll interview other people because maybe it's linked in i'm expressing myself and that really helps that's always helped with my depression when i express myself basically yes my truth it's very important to have us have people that you feel safe with to express yourself with yes because when you yeah. don't feel safe to express that's when the suppression happens yeah um and i i think it's it's very it's a very powerful community we have here yeah. um you know yeah. and uh and you know it's it's amazing what it what happens when you start putting yourself out there 
um, into the world. No matter Do you remember how a time when there was might... when you were doing it much less and putting yourself out there? Because um, me too. I remember a time when I wasn't sharing. I was just quiet. Like absolutely. Uh, well, so you know, I've gone in cycles actually. Uh, I was telling you about how I had been at that company uh learning about like manifestation and and you know all kinds of different good powerful tools and uh at that point you know we we uh me and my coach we started getting on facebook and we had added a lot of people just because and so it was basically a network marketing opportunity um in financial services and so you're recruiting people and finding people who can be your clients and we would we would do what's called prospecting which is basically going out doing our running our errands doing whatever we got to do go to the store and when you see someone who seems like a sharp individual you would ch chat with them and and lead into talking about the opportunity and inviting them down to the office to interview them and uh so we were doing real life prospecting going around and salvador my uh my coach he was like he started realizing that you know we would use facebook and talk to people we knew but we hadn't really tapped into that cold market yet so we started uh adding a lot of people tapping into it to to the people that didn't know us yeah. um and uh you know, so I had been adding a lot of people. And in that process, I added a lot of people that were entrepreneurs. And, you know, it really started shifting my mindset about things. And I started expressing more, you know, the things that I'd been learning and experiencing that help entrepreneurs, you know, talking about all of this stuff, you know, manifestation, law of attraction, the law of assumption, uh, Neville Goddard, all the different great, great mystical teachers. Um, and then I would, I found myself in the winter when I would feel low on energy, I wouldn't be quite as expressive, but in the spring and summer and to the fall to a degree, I would feel very expressive and I would express myself a lot. And that led into, um, in 2019, I had, uh, so 2018 was when I, when I late 2018 was when I got into urine therapy. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I, I was hanging out at home and I ended up uh, playing a bunch of video games with my brother. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I played video games all winter. I was eating pretty healthy, mostly vegan with a little bit of seafood here and there, um, eating a lot more fruit. I got a juicer. I was doing juicing mm -hmm. and uh, I would do juice fast, urine fasting and uh, oh, yeah. and, you know, just eating pretty healthy. Um, and just somehow or another, whatever happened, what, you know, with me sitting around all winter and in the combination of things I was doing, somehow my body was catabolic. And I, I think part, you know, and, and it, it was catabolic on the muscles, but healing a lot of other areas. Um, and so I came out of that into February in February, I was like, exploring my body feeling my muscles and i'm like my muscles are gone like i used to have yeah. muscles and they're just yeah. they're gone like wow. they're, they're little spring bean arms i'm like that's that's crazy what what happened and yeah. i was like i need to start getting outside and walking more and uh you know at the same time where i'm sitting here thinking i need to start exercising and and getting getting my body back on track uh snake diet guy Cole Robinson had had made a video about he called uh oh I forget what he called it but I think he might have called it death fasting or something like that where um yeah. it was this incredible incredibly intense where he, he would be like all right so you dry fast and you go walk for two hours a day and you just shred shred fat like that because you're dry fasted and your body's like start gonna start pulling water and stuff from your fat uh, so that you can have water and be hydrated enough to, to walk around and stuff. And so I started doing that. I, w I started doing the short dry fasting with walking. Mm -hmm. And like the first day I was like 16 hours dry fasted. I went for a two hour walk and I came home and it was like, it was like I had just done a full body 
lifting workout. Like I was so dead tired and sore yeah. that like I rested and like I ate a big old meal mm-hmm. and uh, had a bunch of distilled water and urine and juice. And like next day I felt great. And mm-hmm. so I just continued doing that. Um, and then as, as it started warming up in Colorado, uh, you know, in March, it was, it was starting to get sunnier as we got closer to spring. I would just, I, I found myself, um, averse to wanting to go out and walk because it was so cold. And so I was like, you know what, what can I do? That's one thing that I can do every single day. That's going to really make me feel better. And obviously that was getting out in the sun. So I'd lay out a towel in the backyard and get as, you know, get down to my underwear and just lay out in the sun uh, as much as possible, as long as the sun was out and it was warm and I didn't feel averse to being out in the cold. Um, So and then after maybe about a week of doing that, then and and with the intention of, okay, I'm going to sit out in the sun and then after the sun, I'm going to go walk. So that was my intention. And after about a week, I finally got myself out walking regularly again. Um, And I had, uh, like, I had been into walking around with weighted vests, ankle weights, and and, uh, wrist weights. Mm. And I had kettlebells, too. Mm. And so uh, at this point, I didn't know where my weight sets were at other than my kettlebells. And so I went and bought some ankle weights, a new a new chest or a new vest weight, and some new wrist weights, mm. and um, a couple small kettlebells that I could walk around with easier than my big ones. Um, actually, no, I had those small kettlebells already. Sorry about that. Um, and basically, what I started doing is I would throw on the weights and go walk, oh, and yeah. uh, I would I would walk around in the backyard with the kettlebells. I didn't like taking the kettlebells with me uh, because, you know, I I can't be walking around for an hour and have to get to a point where I have to set them down and and not be able to get them back home, you know? So I would just, and then eventually I started upping the weight and I would put a a kettlebell up in my weighted vest and walk around with more weight. And my muscles just started coming back doing these farmer walks and these weighted walks. And uh, they actually got way better. And so in this whole time, I'm sitting there drinking as much pee as I can. um, And really, like, it just culminated this whole this whole experience of being outside all day, walking around, meeting people, doing urine therapy, drinking distilled water, eating really healthy. Yeah, just led me into this incredibly grand, great awakening, um, which definitely the shivambu was like easily 80 percent of it i feel like uh, if not if not like 50 percent of the effects of this awakening were from shivambu i guess just fresh uh, urine too the sun the sun was yeah. huge the sun and exercise was definitely huge um but i i definitely feel very strongly that, that the urine therapy helped me with this awakening, with this Holy Spirit awakening that I ended up having uh, yeah. in 2019, I started getting more connected with spiritual entre- entrepreneurs rather than just straight up entrepreneurs that were a bit spiritual. These yeah. were the spiritual people who were like really focused on spirituality yeah. along with entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then uh, in 2020, when everything started happening with the whole event that happened then and and that's kind of still going on to this day um you know i that whole thing started happening with the cv you know and the v's um and all that stuff and uh i was just like when it first started happening i was like you know my intuition was like something something's more is going on here and and uh i decided to uh start following new people on facebook who were truth truthers in the truther community and really kind of get a full picture of what was actually going on and uh you know in that in that process like you know i remember i had found your videos and i was like i want to find this guy on facebook and add him like i want to get involved in this health community because it's such a powerful community i feel yeah. And there's so many, so many interesting people with so many different puzzle pieces. 
and uh so then i started sharing more and more and you know it was summertime again and i'm i'm sharing more and more and just waking up more and more and going through just intense awakenings 2019 2020 and 2021 were just some really intense years for me um and and you know I, I started getting into aging my urine or evolving it, saving it up and evolving yeah. it. And yeah. uh, I mean, I had already been saving it, you know, I just uh, hadn't really used it. Mm -hmm. And then I hear you start talking about the aged urine and I'd go out and do like urine soaking and urine rubbing out in the sun. Mm -hmm. And like, wow. it was intense. Yeah. That, that's such an intense protocol. It's very pranic, you know? I, I definitely... In my experience, doing that urine rubbing in oh. the sun is one of the most pranic things I've ever done. You you feel yeah, it like you do, you know, yeah. Because the age, the evolving urine is so highly pranic and filled with so much prana, so much uh, negative ionic energy, yeah. Um, and the water, the structured water in it, like the whole thing, it, it's, it's like you're you're training your body to absorb prana yeah. and then if you're doing yeah. it out in the sun you're literally being beamed with prana at which the prana is like in my experience kind of pushing through and helping your prana soak into your body and like yeah. if you do that for an hour or two i mean you oh, are wow. just so highly energetic i mean you know exactly what i'm talking about yeah and it's also like it's designed for us to, to have been done i think by creator creation because it absorbs into the skin so easily like water like dave murphy talks about displaces but this one just absorbs like you wouldn't believe like, into the oh skin. yeah perfection your skin feels like a baby you feel like a child with how much energy you have, you know, and it's, it's really just, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so then I, I start getting into, uh, drinking the aged urine and, uh, <laughs> which I was dogmatic. Done... There was, um, there's been many dramas that I've seen with people going against drinking it, which was never true. There's bad for you and to drink. <laughs> I think the biggest thing that people need to, Oh, we okay connection wise? Um... Oh, we're back. Okay. Yep. Okay. So what I was saying though is that okay. when you do drink the uh, aged urine, the evolving urine, I think it's important to start slow, not only with fresh for a lot of people, but especially with that age because. Yes it's it's very expanding of your consciousness and your yeah. awareness mm. but also the detox effects that you can get you can really go if you go too deep too fast on fresh urine or old age yeah the 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 nice the nice uh old age stuff like that can be you can really go into a powerful herxamer effect yes and, yeah you know a lot of people go too deep too quick which you know is not necessarily a bad thing if you know how to detox but yeah if you're new to detoxing then you know That's going right. low and slow is uh is very beneficial and it, just those small micro doses of of fresh urine or aged urine can be very powerfully shifting you just said the proof of the efficacy of urine therapy the detox reaction which is just basically poisons coming out into the bloodstream um because they need to come out because they were inside your body deep within and needs to come out so you need to feel the effects as it comes out as you right. know so yeah agree I mean, when i started fresh urine i got um a, a diarrhea for two days like just fresh um, yeah non-stop oh, yeah. yeah well it's like it's it's like it targets the colon very quickly at first because and your your whole bowel system you know the stomach the the large intestine and small intestine it's really like pushing it's wanting to push out and clear a path because i i i believe and and i experience the, my urine is like it's smart like it knows exactly what i need it to do yeah. and so if i have a colon that needs to be cleared out so that the, the other toxins is going to be pulling out then it'll clear the colon out first and foremost yeah 
uh, because that's, you know, that's the, the pathway that all these toxins are wanting to come out of our body into is, you know, it gets processed in, and dumped out into to be pooped out. You know, it becomes soil. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so how, getting that colon cleared, that was actually one of the first things that I noticed, too was that diarrhea effect and you know at first I, I didn't really think anything bad of it I was like obviously it's doing something and clearing out crap that's not supposed to be there yeah um and you know that was actually one of my first questions about it to to Zen Ottman because he was one of the first people on YouTube that I had found mm -hmm. uh talking about this and and having and he would do lives almost every day you know and so I caught him live and I was like, hey, man, I'm drinking my pee and having like this flushing effect. That is I was I was just like wanted to make sure that that's normal. And, and he was like, yeah, absolutely. It's normal. And, you know, he was like, if you really are uncomfortable with it, you can eat some sort of, uh, you know, like some oats or something, some soluble fibers and insoluble fibers to really start soaking that up so that you're not having quite as much of a uh, diarrhea effect yeah when I had it I remember not I didn't know anything about detox I was completely new and I'm really I wasn't connected at all on Facebook but I didn't think in my heart there was a bad thing I must have intuitively right. known it wasn't bad this but I know some people misinterpret that they don't understand detox and think yes I'm getting really worse it's really bad for you I mean right exactly uh, exactly the detox when you when you're detoxing if you feel it because your body's been literally holding on to all this stuff that and and numbing you from it and and hiding it from you so that you can live a normal life to the best of your ability while still having all these toxins in it but when you start pushing those toxins out yeah. that's when that's when you have to feel it because it's going to be there it's it's right in front of you it's there in your system being processed and so you start feeling it you might feel tired you might feel headaches you might headaches, feel yes you know um yeah. just sick in general yeah. you know you might you might get just all these different detox Acne, symptoms pimples for the age you're massaging very common like um, yeah. lots of flare-ups oh, yeah. in the face but... mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the all of that you know it, it just starts pulling out everything and not to mention um the age you're in enemas and the colon thing tremendous pain holding it in like real struggles oh. when you, you've got toxic yeah. colon that can be very intense and you know yeah. someone who can even hold a urine enema for five or ten minutes that's a big feat in the beginning because it's Truly. like yeah you, it feels so intense and like you're having all kinds of contractions and yeah and moving that urine around and soaking it into to, maybe to somewhat feet. like giving birth but not quite but quite painful i remember oh, yeah <laughs> well i mean when i when i have a big old you know two liter urine enema in me like I have the most intense contractions in my colon area because it's, and like, like I will sit there be, be walking and I'm like, Oh, mm, and I, like, I have to like hum and yeah. breathe to, to calm it down. And, yeah. and, you know, like I, I find what's really helpful in that state is massaging the colon too, because mm. that helps urine move around and make, make its way through to do whatever it wants to do down there yeah. and yeah it's, it's intense how healing it is down there for sure i i mean urine enemas is one of the other like highly pranic highly pranic. highly pranic uh, uh things that i do one of my highly pranic practices like yeah if i if i um you know say like on our last interview talking about the no sleep thing you know one of the most if i'm if i'm doing no sleep i will usually be doing urine enemas and uh a lot of times the 